Hello everyone, how are you? I'm hoping you guys are doing great. And from this lecture, we are going to start our journey into NumPy. NumPy is nothing but a library. We are going to discuss what is NumPy, how to install it, how, what are the different functions we are having, why we are not using list and we are using NumPy. What are the uh, more, more functionalities we are having in NumPy, uh, which we are not having in list. So those are all the things that we are going to do in this series of eight lectures. So this is going to be the first lecture. So without wasting any time, just jump into it and uh, I'll see you on the other side of the lecture. So the uh, environment that we are going to use for coding is this one, which is a Google Collab. All you need to do is just go to Google, search for Google Collab and you will get to know about this Google Collab, which is an environment provided by Google. It is almost same like a Jupyter notebook. So what you need to do, just click on Google Collab the first link that we are having collab.research.google.com and this is something that you will get right and now all you need to do is just click on new notebook if you have not signed up for it just click on sign in and after that you will get the environment and after that you can see it is loading okay that means uh, it is providing you the resources so now here you can see you are having this untitled ipnv which is nothing but uh, the file name to be more specific so here you can define the name of the file which in this case is numpy or i would say introduction to numpy which is going to be our first lecture of this series okay so now what we are going to do next here you can see we are having a button of connect if you click on connect it will start uh, allocating you the resources because this is an online environment this is not on a local system okay so google uh, is providing you resources so uh, it is initializing and after that this is where you can write the code you can add few code cells it is same like a jupyter notebook now you can see uh, tick is there and here you can see uh, it has provided you 12.69 uh, gigs of ram and 107 gigs of storage where you can uh, load your data sets and all so now because we are going to work on numpy so let's see what we are having in numpy so first of all how to install a numpy to install a numpy all we need to do is this exclamation mark after that you need to write pip for python package manager click space and after that you need to write install install and here you need to write the name of the file which is going to be numpy that's how easy it is make sure to write an exclamation mark in front of it and by default it is installed it is already installed on your system on uh, google collab okay so once that is installed what you can do and uh, now here it has shown you the file location as well that requirement already satisfy means file file is already installed at this particular location now what next how to import the file because we know it is installed how to load the file on our program to load the file we are going to write import numpy that's how it is import numpy to import a file or a library on our system or in our environment now what you can do either you can write import numpy or if you want to call it with a shorter name so that you do not need to write numpy again and again you can also write import numpy as np but this np denotes np denotes this uh, this library to be more specific we are not going to write numpy and again and again we we'll just use np instead of numpy right so let's execute this and see how it is going now here you can see a tick is there that means this cell is also executed so if i'm writing np and executing it so here you can see we are having a module which is called as user at this particular location we are having this module which is numpy means my numpy is now loaded so now let's see how we can create an array what is a list uh, means how an array is different from a list for that purpose i am creating a list first of all and in this list i am adding three elements one two and three so let's execute this and i'm expecting you know how list work how data structure works right so if i'm executing lst so this is one two three which is the thing nothing but a list how to check what is the type of it for that purpose you can write type python is a case sensitive language so make sure to write type in the same manner you cannot manipulate uh, the case sensitivity 
So here you can see the type of this list, uh, this LST variable that we have initialized as list, right? So now what we can do, how to convert this list into an array? To convert this list into an array, we need to call a function named as array, np dot array bracket open bracket close and inside this we can pass the object that we having the variable that we are having that we want to convert into a list uh, into an array so here i am passing my lst which is now the list earlier it is the list but now i want to convert it into a variable in this array so now if we are executing it and printing this a double r because we have taken this list Whatever elements I am having in the list, which is one, two, three, I have converted them into an array. Now, this is a type of array because array is written here. Even if we are checking the type of a double r, here you can see it is of type nd array. What is nd array? nd means it is an n dimensional array. It can be one, two, three, four, and n number of times. That is why it is displaying nd array and it is of time numpy. Okay. So this is how you can initialize an array. If let, let's suppose the list is two dimensional, right? You can even go for that as well. That will display you a two dimensional array. Simple. So this is what we have discussed about how to convert an array, a list into an array. Clear? After that, we are having how to check, I would say the, the dimensions of the array. Now in this case, the dimension is one dimension only because we are having one to three element in the same dimension. So what I can do, I can write this a double r, which is my array and I will write and d i m right. And after going through it, what I will get, I will get the dimensions of the array. Okay. Okay. Array dot n int object is okay. Okay. And d i m and it is displaying you one. One means this is a one dimensional array because we are having all the elements in one dimension. What if this is a two dimensional array? Means I am going for something like this. We are having some length and some width, right? We are having length or rows or columns. So this is a two dimensional array now. And now if we are converting into an array, this is the array that we are having, which is having two dimensions. So now if I'm checking the dimensions of the array, though it is displaying you this is a two dimensional array simple now similarly we can also check the shape of the array means arr dot shape if i'm writing so here you can see the shape of the array is three cross three by three cross three because we are having three rows three columns if we are changing the shape into two cross three or three cross four you can go for that as well this is just to tell you what is the shape of the array right next we are having the size of the array the size of the array, what it will do, it will tell you how many elements are there in an array. Total of nine elements are there in this array of size three cross three. Very simple. So this is the function which will tell you how many elements are there. After that, we can also check the data type of the array, right? ARR dot D T Y P E. If we are going for array dot D type, okay, we need to remove this. Now it is displaying you this is of int 64, int 64, this is nothing but an integer of 64 base. Now here you can see as well, all the values are integer format. So that is why we are getting the data type of the whole array, which kind of data that we are having in that array. The data is of integer data type. Okay. So after that, what we are having, we can also generate some arrays of zeros and ones of any shape of your choice. Now, how to generate that uh, for that purpose, what we can do, let's suppose uh, I am having a function named as zeros, right? So I'm calling that function now np dot zeros. Okay. np dot zeros is a function inside that I'm having multiple parameters that I can take. First parameter is going to be the shape. What should be the shape of that array? Either it is three by three, four by four, five by five, 10 by hundred or whatever shape of your choice. So I am defining a shape of let's suppose three comma five for this point of time means I will create an array of three comma five where I will have all the zeros clear here I am writing zeros and p dot array of shape zeros and I think that is the only mandatory part that we are having because all we need to define is just the shape of the array now if I am going for zeros so here you can see 
Three is the height, which are nothing but the number of rows, and five are the number of columns that we are having. Okay, so this is how we have created an array of shape three comma five. Similarly, we can also go for five comma three if you want, and you can see how the shape changes. Now we are having five rows, three columns. So first element is for the number of rows. Second is for the number of columns. Similarly, we can also generate ones, right? If you want to go for it, np dot ones is going to be there, and the main data type that I need to pass is the main parameter that I need to pass in this function is the shape, and the shape in this case I am writing let's suppose six comma three. Let's go for it. Just print ones, and here you can see six rows and three columns. This is how you can create an array, and these are the very basic function that we can use in an array. That's pretty much it. And in the next videos, we are going to dig deeper into the different things that we are having in array. Different function we are having like how to generate random numbers, how to arrange the element, how to uh, create a sequence of elements. So those are all the things that we are going to dig uh, deeper into the next video. So yes, that's pretty much it. And I'll see you in the next one.